5 a.m., remember, in our giant chamber of imagination, and we've taken you back to December 7th of 1941, and you're there. You're at the Hawaiian Islands on December 7th, and you're about to be as surprised as all of the folks on the ground at Pearl Harbor and Hickam Field were. Remember, the, code, the successful raid was flashed back to the task, carrier task force before the first bomb falls. Koha! 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 Tiger! 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 A single remote radar station had spotted the incoming raiders, but mistook them for a flight of B-17, new in from the mainland. The B-17s arrive, and like America itself, find themselves in the middle of a war that had not yet been declared. Yes, this is Cora. Cora, Cora, the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. We've taken you back to that fateful morning of December 7, 1941. The attack from the Japanese aircraft carriers Akaga, Akagi, Sirius, Soryu, and two new carriers, the Shokoku and Spikoku, last an hour and 45 minutes. And when the first bombs began to fall, as you saw that Curtis B-40 Warhawk take off, you can imagine Army Air Corps pilots Kenneth Taylor and George Welch returning from an island town and racing to their plane, which were fueled and armed for aerial combat practice and quickly found themselves in the middle of the real thing. The two brave second lieutenants caught up with the Japanese at Iwa, a marine base in auxiliary field close to Pearl Harbor and Hickam Field. Taylor and Welch quickly ran out of ammunition, landed at Wheeler Field near the center of the island, refueled, reloaded, and took off to fight again. These two brave pilots are credited with downing six Japanese planes before their own planes were disabled. And here's the flight of B-17, due in from the mainland, looking for a place to land. They had no idea they were moving into an actual war zone. At Pearl Harbor and Hickam Field, the devastation was awesome. Along the eastern edge of Ford Island, in the center of the harbor, seven battleships lay at birth. The California, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Tennessee, Arizona, and the Nevada. The Japanese hit first with eight torpedo bombers. You see the Kates coming in from your right with the torpedoes hanging down below the main body of the aircraft. The initial wave of Kates hit the Oklahoma, California, Nevada, West Virginia, and an aging target ship, the Utah. These Kates were equipped with special shallow running torpedoes designed specifically for the attack on Pearl Harbor. You see, the shallow waters in Pearl Harbor would not allow the use of normal deep-running torpedoes. That way, the Japanese could not deny that this was a specific planned attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th of 1941. And we have taken you back to that fateful morning of December 7th, 1941. 7.55 in the morning. Then came the foul dive bombers. High overhead to the left, you can see the red tail bell diving down armed with 1,700-pound armor-busting projectiles made for 16-inch battleship guns but converted to aerial bombs. These planes dive down on the Nevada and the Arizona. Anti-aircraft fire veered the bows away from the Nevada on the first wave, but the Arizona wasn't that lucky. A bomb stabbed the Arizona through her forward magazines and exploded, touching off more than a billion pounds of gunpowder. A sailor on the Nevada watched the Arizona jump up at least 15 to 20 feet in the water and break into two pieces, forever entrapping 1,200 American servicemen in an underwater tomb. The ship sank in less than three minutes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as you see these aircraft flying, you can imagine what it must have been like. December 7th, 1941, to your left, the B-17 with one wheel down. You can see how it must have been. These planes coming in from the mainland, unarmed, no place to land, damaged by the Japanese. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cora, 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 the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. At Bellows Field, on the northeast coast of the island, four U.S. Army Air Corps pilots were racing to their B-40s. And just then, Japanese Zeros appeared and started scraping runs. One B-40 pilot was killed, as he stepped into his cockpit. Two other P-40s were down just as they got off the ground. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our giant chamber of imagination has taken you back to that fateful morning of December 7, 1941. Tora, 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 the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, and you are there. 
you can imagine, 183 zero fighters scraping runs all up and down the runway, dropping very light bombs. The Kate Torpedo Bombers coming in and dropping their special shallow running torpedoes. The Val Dye Bombers diving in from high overhead. And to your left, you can see the Curtis B-40 Warhawk engaging one of the Japanese Zeros, symbolizing those two brave pilots that were able to get into the air that fateful morning of December 7th. George Taylor and Kenneth Welch were managed to shoot down a few of the Japanese Zeros before their own planes were disabled. The Val Dye Bomber diving down from the left. The Cape Torpedo Bomber beginning to come back in from the left. The Zeros continuing to pound the field. Yes, this is Tora, 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 the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. And you are there that fateful morning. That flight of B-17s coming from the mainland arrive and are immediately attacked by the marauding Japanese Zeros. In the confusion, the B-17s were shot at by friend and foe and the bright crews landed wherever they could. One of the B-17s landed in a pineapple field, not far from Hickam Field. One of the B-17 pilots, as you see the B-17 coming in, reflected the thought of all of the pilots. He said, he's a Major Landon, what a hell of a way to enter a war, out of gas, unarmed, and no place to land. Eight B-17s actually made it to Hickam Field. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the kids, we've taken you back to that fateful morning of December 7, 1941. The Torah, Torah, Torah attack on Pearl Harbor. You are there, and you can imagine what it must have been like with 183 fighters and bombers from Japan's first air fleet. The Cape Torpedo Bombers out in front of you. High overhead, the Val Dye Bomber diving in from the left, and the Zeros continuing to pound the field doing their scraping runs. Yes, this is Tora, 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 and we've taken you back to that fateful morning of December 7, 1941. Prior to this moment, the United States was helping its allies in Europe and in China, but was not actually fully involved in World War II. This surprise Japanese attack ended that position. And you can imagine in our giant chamber of imagination, you see the bombs go off and you hear the sound of the air raid siren and the sound of gunfire, what it must have been like that fateful morning of December 7th. Tora, Tora, Tora was the call back to the carrier task force, indicating a totally surprised raid on the part of the 183 fighters and bombers from Japan's first air fleet. Listen to the sound of the radial engines. As the Zeros continue to circle and pound the field, the Cape Torpedo Bombers continue to drop those shallow running torpedoes. The attack lasted an hour and 45 minutes until all of the munitions were expended by the Japanese aircraft. All of the bombs were dropped. All of the torpedoes were dropped. All of the gunfire was done. And that was the way it was December 7th of 1941. At the conclusion of the surprise Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, more than half of America's entire naval fleet had been destroyed or damaged. Nearly 2,400 Americans were killed, over 1,200 wounded, and at the time, 960 were missing. 151 aircraft were destroyed as they sat on the ground. Virtually every U.S. military aircraft in Hawaii Two battleships, three destroyers, and two light cruisers were destroyed. Six battleships were damaged. Our greatest naval base lay in ruins along with our complacency. The following day, December 8, 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt announced our entry into World War II with these words to Congress, the citizens of the United States and the world. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America 
was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. It will be recorded that the distance of Hawaii from Japan makes it obvious that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. In the 44 months of fighting that followed, the United States sank every one of the Japanese aircraft carriers, battleships, and cruisers of the Pearl Harbor Strike Force. Nagasaki, where the city, where the special armor-busting